Good morning. It's June the 9th, 2020. And I have in my hand a jar of my granddaughter's favorite things, and I like them a lot too. M&Ms. So I'm going to show you a demonstration that I often do with our children for Children's Church. I'm going to get as many of these M&M's as I can get because I love M&M's. Oh, my dog is here and she wants some too. Not good for you, Stella. So, my hand is full of these M&M's and I'm grasping almost all of them. But now, my hand is stuck in the jar and there is no way I can get the M&M's. Oh, I'm sorry, Stella. This is not good for you. The only way that I could possibly get an M&M is to release my hold, my grasp, and allow them to be poured into my hand. And I'm sorry, I'm torturing my dog. I'll get you a treat later, girlfriend. Like children who can't let go of the candy that they can feel in their hand, I think sometimes we have a hard time of letting go of whatever it is that we like, that we are attached to, that we feel we can grasp and hold and control. But sometimes our grasping, our holding on is keeping us from letting go to receive what God has for us. It seems that at this point in time, we are in the midst of a transformation. There is new life on the other side of our letting go of our false assurances, of our old ways that we think are the only thing that's keeping us secure. On the other side of that which is holding us back, God has something better for us, new life that God wants us to receive, the real life that God always has for us. The church, the body of Christ on earth, has been given this opportunity let's be honest, has been compelled <laughs> by the necessity to consider new ways of being God's people on the earth. This means there's probably going to be some scary days ahead. Ways and days and means when we have to let go of some of our old ways of being and doing the ways that we have held on to so tightly in order to receive the new life that God wants for us. It won't be easy. Taking up your cross and following Jesus never is. I'm reminded of the words of Dietrich Bonhoeffer. Um, a German priest who resisted Hitler's evil regi regime. He wrote a powerful little book called The Cost of Discipleship. And in it, he speaks about free grace is not cheap grace. These are his words. Cheap grace is the grace we bestow on ourselves Grace without discipleship, grace without the cross, grace without Jesus Christ living and incarnate. The truth that we must learn as we go and as we grow into the people that God has created us to be is that the wonderful grace of Jesus is not the path of least resistance. Peter said, no, don't go this dangerous way. 
In Mark 8, 31, Jesus began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priest, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, but turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd and his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and lose their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Jesus warns us that the path of least resistance is the wide and compelling path of selling off little bits of ourself, of our Christian walk, of our way, of our integrity, until there's nothing left. It's the wide path to destruction. We are called to give all that we are, even our comfortable securities, even our self-serving assurances. We are to give all that we have and all that we are. To the way of Jesus. It may feel like sacrifice. In fact, it will be sacrifice. The sacrifice of our self-serving ways and means so that we can receive the new life that God has for us. Peter and Jesus and Dietrich Bonhoeffer, who was ultimately um, put to death for his resistance, to the Hitler regime, they all knew that this is costly. It's going to feel terribly costly when we take up our cross to follow Jesus. But that is what we're called to do. But then, when we go all in, to follow in the way of Christ, what we find is that the life on the other side is more free and more full than we could ever have manufactured on our own, than we could have ever secured under our own power. We will be more alive and more ourselves than we ever could have been while running away and grasping on and trying to protect ourselves from the very life that we are called to live. What if we gained the whole world and lost our very selves in the process? Let us pray. Holy and loving God, show us the way of life and lead us on that way. Give us the courage to follow you in that way, whatever it takes. Stay close to us and keep us close to you and make us ever mindful of your eternal, loving, gracious, revealing presence. Lead us even through the valley of the shadow of death. Take our hands and lead us to new life that is real and full and free and forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.